I'm so excited you're here because I have put together some of my most favorite DIYs from this past year. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching friends we're at walmart in the craft section and i'm about to show you guys my favorite deals here that are not they're not cheap because the items are really really nice i would pay more than that for these items any day so let me show you guys which ones i use okay guys so the first item i picked up were these stacking crates they're so awesome they're only ten dollars and 48 cents and you get three different trays in there and you can do so many different things with these. Let me show you what to do with them. Start by taking them apart and they're just like held together by zip straps on all of the handles. So I just simply cut them off and then pulled them apart. Now for the bigger one, I really was not sure what I wanted to do, but I knew that for one of them, I wanted to make like a key holder or whatever you want to call it. So I went in my stash, I pulled out this phone wallet keys, lock the door, kiss me goodbye transfer. I've been wanting to use this transfer forever. I just wasn't sure what to use it on. So when I picked these up, I automatically knew that this would be perfect. So I just transfer on the phone wallet and then lock the door, kiss me goodbye in my white chalk paste and then for the keys and the heart I transfer that on with my gold chalk paste. So when I'm working with the shimmers you might see here that I'm going over it quite a few times and that's just an OCD thing in my head. In my head I guess I think if I put more layers, it's going to go through and the shimmer is going to be better. I don't know, you guys. Don't do what I do and waste your pace. Just put one layer on there. Um, now, I pulled it up and I could see that the gold, I couldn't see the gold very well. So all I did was just lay that right back down and put my white paste right over that. And look how amazing this looks, you guys. To hang my keys, all I did was take some C hooks and put those at the bottom and then last but not least for the back to hang this up I just nailed in a sawtooth hanger I like these ones I get from Walmart they're really really easy to hammer in those little teeny nails um, with my nails I have a hard time holding those little nails so these make it really easy because the nails are already there and all you have to do is just hammer that in and look how amazing this turned out you guys I love it so much let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. I also wanted to mention that I did stick with transfers that they had in stock. There might be one or two that was in stock when I started and now is not, but I do know that this one should be in stock as well as all the other ones that are. I will have linked in my link tree in the description box below for you guys. If you can't find the description box, all you have to do is just click on the title of this video. Moving on to the next crate, I believe this is the smallest of the three. I take my Creative Kickstart Transfer. This one says every day is a fresh start. And this is so cute because it comes with another transfer as well and the little embellishments to decorate your project. So I just love that so much. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. And this is part of the Creative Kickstart where if you guys spend a certain amount on my chalk site, you will get um, certain transfers for free. So if you spend a certain amount, you'll get one. If you spend a little more, you'll get two. And if you spend more, you'll get three. So I just transfer that on with my white chalk paste. When I did this, I had in mind to put this in the girl's room. If you guys didn't know, I know a lot of you guys know, but we're about to move and I'm so excited to decorate my girl's room. They'll be sharing a room. They're so excited. They want to share a room. And I I'm just so excited to decorate for it. So in this video, I did make a few things for their room and this was one of them. But once I transferred on my wording, then I just took the little felt flowers that it came with. Now it did come with little tape to tape it down, but I have hot glue. So I glued my leaves to the flower and then the flowers to either corner of my project and I just love the way this looks my daughter is super excited to hang it up in her room to hang it I just 
doubled up a piece of jute and glued it to the back and then cut off the excess and it works like a charm. They also have that same tray set in a different color. And you guys, I'm so upset. I did not see this color. Um, I only saw this one when I grabbed it and I wish I would have grabbed this one, but look how cute these are. And they look like distressed wood. They're so, so cute. Moving on to the third and final tray. Now this is the middle tray and this one was super easy. I knew that I wanted to make like a little tray for my table or my stove i have a stove cover on my stove if you guys have not seen that video that is an oldie but a goodie i still get comments on that video so i know that people still watch it i can put that in the cards in the right hand corner if you haven't seen it but i have a little spot on my stove that i could put this and it looks so cute so i just wanted to doll it up a little bit all i did was put some white dry brushing on it with my cotton dixie bell paint and this is why I was upset that I didn't see the white distressed ones because I probably would have picked those up instead of the natural wood ones but that's okay I love the way that everything turned out so it is what it is but anyway once I dry brushed my cotton dixie bell on then i go in with this home transfer now this one is an old one it's retired um, about a month ago they had a super great deal where you could buy a bunch of mystery transfers some were in stock some were retired and this is one of the ones i got so i figured that i would utilize it and that's why if you guys see a transfer that you like pick it up because things go in and out of stock a lot as well as they go retired so that new products can come in so i did just want to give you guys that tip i was showing you there to go and wash your transfer every single time as soon as you're done that way you don't ruin it and then i went in with the little wreath with my pesto chalk paste now this was not a full wreath i had to keep kind of going around and around putting my transfer in different spots and then once i was satisfied I did go back in with a small paintbrush as well as my chalk paste and just kind of fill in those empty spots. Anytime you fill anything in like this freehand, always make sure to keep looking at it, stepping back a little bit, making sure that you like the way that it's turning out before you continue. And look how cute this is, you guys. I love it so much. We literally just did three projects for 10 bucks. They're all really high end. I would pick them all up in a high end store. So let me know if you would as well. Look how cute this hanging frame trio is. You can do whatever you like with it. Once again, it's real wood. It's super heavy. $12.98 for three six by six frames. You could cut these apart so that way you have decor for different parts of your house or leave it apart like I did. So let me show you how cute mine turned out. Okay guys, this might be one of my favorites from this video. You guys can let me know what you think, but I took the transfer from my home block and my love block set. It was a chalk made kit and when I filmed this, there were some in stock, but unfortunately they're out of stock now, but I might have a few extra. So um, if you would like to get your hands on the block set, just reach out to me. I can see what I have. But anyway, I just cut up the transfer and I I transferred on the word home at the top. Now on the block set, you'll transfer on each individual letter onto the blocks. But for this, I thought it would be really cute to put them all in the first square. For the second square, I cut up the sweet home in half. Now on the block set, sweet home will be all together. Um, but for this, I knew that it wouldn't look right. It probably wouldn't fit. So after I transferred on the home with my black chalk paste, then I also transfer on 
the sweet home with the black chalk paste as well so here i am cutting it and this material that i'm chalking on like the back of the frames it's really nice material so if i messed up on this it's super easy just to take a baby wipe or a q-tip to just wipe it right up and clean it up and i love that about this uh, decor piece Now, I'm not going to lie, you guys, this video did not almost happen. I was really flustered. I've been in and out of my shed and just trying to find the right spot to craft and everybody be happy, my kids, myself, etc., etc. So I was trying to get comfortable. I couldn't get comfortable. I didn't have much time to waste. So I almost quit you guys and I was like nope you know what my people depend on it they look forward to it I have to show up and I have to give it my all so thank god to Chalk Couture because if it wasn't for Chalk Couture as well I definitely would not have gotten all of these projects done so right now in my life um, Chalk Couture is my favorite medium to use and you know, I know that not everybody likes that, but for right now, I'm loving it. And for those of you that do, I appreciate every single one of you. And for those of you that don't, just stay tuned. I'm buying a house. There's going to be so much more content to come, and it will not be all chalk couture DIYs. So anyway, you guys, for the bottom piece, now I knew I wanted to put a little wreath in there, but this greenery that I had it was a little bit too bushy and I just wanted to show you like I kept messing around with it trying to get it in there trying to glue it down but because this white surface like I told you like wipes up really easily the hot glue did not want to stick so plan B no big deal all I did was take a piece of ribbon that I absolutely love it was a little bit too thick so I just folded it in half and glued it to the top of the wreath and then I just glued it to the top of the frame and and then over the back and look how cute this is you guys I love it so 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 much again I can't figure out which project is my favorite but this one is definitely up there in my top few obviously my favorite are the wood signs and you know the wood based decor that Walmart sells. This is only $6.68. It's really lightweight, so it's perfect for your wall, especially if you can't like put nails in your wall or something and you have to use command strips. This is perfect because it's so light. And again, this is another one that you could make double-sided. And again, it is $6.68. So let's go see what to do with that one as well. So this one I made for my new home. I take my life is better in the country transfer and I transfer on that wheat with my gold paste. Now originally I was going to do all the wording with my black paste but I ultimately decided to do the country in an ombre effect. So to do that all you have to do is do half of your word in each color and then you just bind the two colors together either by a little bit of water on the end of your finger and then wiping off the excess once you bind them together or like I just did I figured out this technique I just took my squeegee and just kind of blended them down and it looks the same I love it it's much less messy and I think I was on to something there so next this one was super easy that's what I love most about chalk couture anybody can do it it's so easy it takes minutes um, you can reuse them you can sell them they look like high-end images I mean the list literally goes on but but to finish this sign off, I take some jute and I just wrap it at the bottom and the top and securing it on both sides with some hot glue. And then just making a super simple bow, actually two bows, gluing them together and then gluing them to the top corner. And look how cute this is, you guys. I'm sorry. I know that like other styles are in right now, but I personally just love the farmhouse and... Um, I'm really excited to show you guys the new Chalk Couture catalog because it is farmhouse, but it's definitely more modern, clean. I really, really love what they did, and I'm so excited to show you guys, but I also absolutely love this transfer, and this one, 
you can find on my chalk site. Next, I picked up one of these palette signs. It was $7.78. This is a longer one. And then the one that I picked up is more of like a white distressed for $7.98. It is a 12 by 12. It's totally finished and you can do whatever you like with it. You can make it double sided. Look how adorable. So let's go see what to do with this one. This little fence, I don't know what they call it. Wood fence sign, it's by Hampton Art. It's only 960 and it is so so cute i cannot wait to diy with this okay guys this is another super simple one but looks so high end so obviously i start by taking the tag off or the wrapper i don't really know what to call that but i just peel that all or like rip it apart it's just paper so it didn't take much to pull it apart and then I take my truck transfer now you're probably wondering why there's two sides of it this has a coordinating truck cutout so um, you don't have to get that but there's two sides that way if you get the truck cut out then you can transfer on both sides of your truck in maybe like a different pattern or color or something like that but I take the first truck and I just again cut it apart from the bottom piece and then I fuzz that with my fuzzing cloth to make sure that when I pull it up it will pull up nicely. So once I had the first part of the truck transfer on with my black paste then I go in with the second part of the truck with my storm chalk paste. Now this transfer is the accessories to the truck. For this particular project, I'm only going to use the Farm Fresh Produce one and only transfer on the Farm Fresh. And once again, I peel back that transfer to reveal that gorgeous wording. Next, I made a simple double loop bow, and then I made, so this is kind of like a fake bow. You make the first part, and then you just take two, actually one piece, fold it kind of on a diagonal, and then glue it to the first piece, and then fluff up your bow so you have a gorgeous looking bow, and nobody knows that it's two pieces. Once I had that glued together, then I glue it down to the middle of my sign, and then I just take some greenery, gluing that to the ends of the ribbon, and literally that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out, and I really love that this is one of those pieces that I can keep up in my home all year round. Now, I didn't pick any of these up, but look at these two-pack tin sheets for $10.98. These would have been perfect for those barn doors that I made. In fact, let's pick two of them up, and actually two packs of them, and I will show you a DIY with these in a different video. I didn't pick up any of these either, but check out how cute these are. This one's 522 and it's this cute little shape. And then this one's 997. Let me show you guys all the different shapes they have. Okay, so this one's 522, this one's 997, and this one's 997 as well. They're really, really good size, and I just love the way they look. So let's pick them up, and if you guys wanna see how I DIY them, let me know in the comments, and I would love to bring that to you. Now, I know all you guys always ask about my Waverly chalk paint section. My store still carries them. They're still fully stocked. 
Um, I've asked them if they're going to stop and they said no, not anytime soon. So I'm not really too sure about different locations in the state but I do know that my location is always stocked up pretty nicely. So look at all these galvanized signs they have. They have the like longer one as well as the square one. And then those are 1266. That one's 1256. They have the round sign. I'm not too sure how much that one is, but I do know that this shiplap one is $20.72. I don't know if I would pay that for that. Let me know in the comments. Would you guys pay that for that? It is really good size, um, but I know that I could definitely make that for much, much cheaper. So I don't know if I would do that one. Let me know what you guys think. With these paints because uh -huh. this is green, pink, green, pink, blue, yellow, orange, dark, dark, dark orange, and light orange. Perfect. Those are all the colors of this. There's the tag on the back. Love it. And I want these for my room. Okay. Bye. Bye. You guys do not sleep on Walmart's florals. They are comparable to Hobby Lobby and Michael's and they are at a fraction of the cost. If you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know that I rave about Walmart's florals because they're just that amazing. Always check for the seasonal florals because with every season they put out different types of florals. They're putting out the spring stuff, so they're finally putting out the lamb's ear again and the lavender, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is the floral that I used in my last video, my trash to treasure. So if you guys haven't seen that, I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner. Walmart has a lot of good wooden shapes for a decent price. Like these are 97 cents, pretty much like three cents cheaper or now 28 cents cheaper than Dollar Tree. But um, definitely always check your local Walmart. Now I wouldn't buy stuff like this just because you know you can get that at Dollar Tree for cheaper, but always check your wood section. Okay friends, let's start off with this little tag sign from Dollar Tree. And originally I was gonna cut the little hanger, but I realized that I could use it once we were done. So I just gently took it off and set it aside. And then I gave this a distressed coat of my Dixie Belle Sage, I think it's Sage Green, don't quote me. I know it's Sage something, but you guys, this paint is buttery smooth. If you cannot get Waverly chalk paint, this is amazing chalk paint, and I know you guys will love it as much as I do. I don't get anything, so I will leave the link in the description box for you guys. That way, if you guys can't get Waverly, you can get this. But anyway, so I wanted this to look like faux shiplap, so I went every inch and a half I marked it and then I drew a line with my pencil and then the easiest part of this is just to take a paper towel and to kind of smudge these lines and make them look not perfect if that makes sense don't be alarmed your paper towel will like kind of shred to pieces if you will don't worry just get another one if you need to it's no big deal once I was satisfied with the way that it looked, then I went in with my pencil once again and just drew little screws where I thought that they would be, and then I also smudged those with a paper towel as well. For the next part, there are so many different ways you could do this. Dollar Tree sells jar little signs that you could glue down to your sign. But for me, I wanted to use my Bloom and Grow Transfer. There are two different jar designs that come in this exact transfer. So it comes one and then you cut it apart. Obviously for this project, the Bloom and Grow was perfect. So I start by transferring on the outer part with my black chalk paste. And then I go in with my white chalk paste and I transfer on the little flower as well as the Bloom and Grow. Next I 
just grab some random greenery and some flowers that I had in my stash. If you guys have not seen my um, Walmart DIY video, I will leave that linked in the cards in the right hand corner. But I just recently showed you guys some DIYs and some DIY items that are affordable from Walmart. And I also took you through the floral section. Walmart's floral section is my absolute favorite. They look so high end and they're such a great price that that's where I normally get most of my florals. So um, I just took some lamb's ear and then this pink bunch with the peonies. They are from a different bunch. So I just kind of pull some random pieces and then arrange them the way that I like. Once I have them arranged and figure out like the way that I want them, this is what I like to do. That way I'm not gluing it down and then I have to rip stuff off because I don't like it. I would just much rather lay it down, see how I like it, and then pull everything off and glue it down with some Gorilla Hot Glue. So if you guys are enjoying this type of content, please give this video a big thumbs up. And if you are not a part of my crafty family, I would love if you would subscribe and then ring the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. So for this next part, I left this in. Generally, I cut things like that out because I feel like you guys don't want to see me like arranging it, pulling it off, etc. But if you guys enjoy like watching my process, seeing how I, you know, put my floral arrangements together, whatever the case may be, let me know down in the comments because like I said, I always think like you guys don't want to see that. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this sign. I love it so much, but again, I can never pick a favorite because I'm so indecisive, but you guys, this is definitely up there in one of my top favorites that I have ever made. Oh, I forgot to mention, and my camera does very weird things, so some of the clips are not there, but you can see that I just put a tiny little bow right underneath on the side of this little floral arrangement. I thought that it just tied it all together and tied it to all of the other pieces that I made, so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of DIY number one. On I take one of these wheel wreath forms from Dollar Tree. I wasn't sure what to call it at first, but I think it's a wheel wreath form. And I start by just, again, taking that random greenery that I had and laying it out so that I could see what I had. So I take two bunches of lamb's ear. They're $2 a piece and they come with two, I guess, stalks, stems, picks. <laughs> in each bunch. So I took two of each, so four all together, and I put two on one side and two on the other. And then to attach them, I take some jute and just wrap it around and then secure it with some hot glue. Now to glue this down, I glued it down with some hot glue, making sure to glue it on top of one of those cutting mats because I knew that the hot glue would go right through this metal piece. And when I went to pull it up, of course the hot glue stretched. So all I did was just go in and just wrap the greenery to the wheel, if that makes sense. Now I already knew that I would have to do this, but the reason that I wrapped the greenery first, instead of just wrapping it directly to the wheel, um, my thinking was that if I wrapped the greenery first, then I would have something to like adhere it to. If you go and just try to wrap it, I mean, you can do that, but then they try to flop around. And I always find that it doesn't always look the way that I want it. So if I wrap it first and then wrap it again to the wheel, then I know that it's going to look exactly the way that I like it. 
Now when I ended this jute, of course I attached it with some hot glue, but I kind of put it in a design on an X just in case I decided that I didn't want to add flowers. But of course I wanted everything to go together and I really loved the way that these flowers looked right in the middle of that greenery. So of course I did go ahead and I glued down the greenery and, or I should say, I kept saying greenery, the flowers, <laughs> glued down the flowers that I liked. Now one of my panties ended up being all wonky. They have like these plastic pieces at the bottom that hold them to their shape. And this bottom piece kind of came unglued, which made the rest of it come apart. So all I did was just run some hot glue across those plastic pieces and then kind of pushed it together in the middle and voila, it looks brand new. Next, I pulled some greenery from a different pick. It's a different color as well as, or I should say two different picks. Um, they're kind of different color greens and I just wanted to add a pop of color here and there. So I just kind of arranged that the way that I liked it. Now, this is personal preference. This is the way that my eyes are happy. So you have to arrange the way that your eyes make you happy. Okay guys, if you're wondering why it's so close, again, my camera is doing funny things. I didn't have this clip, um, but I did have it on my phone for my TikTok and Instagram, so I guess I'll do a shameless plug. <laughs> if you guys are not following me on Instagram and TikTok, you can find me at All Things Crafty too. all one word. I post um, you know, daily content over there. It's really fun. I have stories. I do a lot of personal things. I chat. It's a lot. It's a lot fun. It's a lot of fun. And I hope that you guys will come over and check me out. So anyway, I needed to make a sign for this, or I guess I didn't need to, but I wanted to. <laughs> and I didn't have anything quite big enough in the house, but I did have these signs and you guys know I love these signs. So all I did was take my welcome transfer, I marked it, measured it out, and then cut with my utility knife. I just score it a few times from the front and then kind of push from the back and then I cut it down that like bend if you will. So again, I lost the clip on both. You guys, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm doing my best to survive and keep it all together and whew, it's a lot. So anyway, I'm doing my best. I hope you guys understand. But anyway, I painted it and then I just once again drew those lines with my pencil every inch and a half and then I um, smudged it again with my paper towel after I marked or I should say, put down the little screws at the top and bottom. And I'm sure you guys have guessed it. I went in with my welcome transfer. Look how gorgeous this font is, you guys. I could never do this by hand if I wanted to. And to use my Cricut would take me probably an hour just to cut this one word because you have to design it. You have to hook up your machine. It's a lot. So I literally just cut my transfer, pull it from the backing sheet, lay it on my surface, and then use my black chalk paste to transfer on that gorgeous word. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, you guys know my OCD gets the best of me. I'm also super indecisive. So it takes me forever to kind of figure out where I like this, but I kind of just slide it down behind that greenery. And then once I'm satisfied with the placement, then I hold it with one of my hands um, from the bot or from the front. And then with my other hand, I use my hot glue to glue kind of on top of the wheel, gluing the sign to the wheel from the back. And if I didn't mention, add lots and lots and lots and lots of hot glue. I do not want this sign to go anywhere once I hang it up. I'm so excited to put it up at my door, at my new, on my door at my new house. Clearly, Melissa cannot talk today. It's been a long day already. But anyway, I just let that dry before I go and move it around. I also 
make sure it's not going to go anywhere once it's dry and then I once again secure it with some more hot glue just to reinforce it. I'm using my smaller hot glue gun and for some reason when the temperature isn't as high it doesn't glue as well so I just wanted to be sure that this was not going anywhere. Moving on I didn't have this in frame very well and my table is driving me nuts because <laughs> the lines are not straight in the video and I know you guys don't care about that but it's driving me nuts so I apologize if that bothers you but I did just want to bring in some kind of like soft girly elements to this so I thought that that ribbon that I used in the previous DIY would be perfect to kind of just make small little petals if you will so I just cut a small piece I fold it and glue it in half and then I pinch it and glue it together then once that dries then I just kind of glue it into my arrangement um, and look how cute this is and then for the hanger I use that exact same ribbon I got this at Walmart around Christmas time and I just fallen in love with it ever since unfortunately this is my last one so I'm gonna try to have to hunt some down but anyway I just kind of wrap it from the front to the back on both sides securing it down with some hot glue and then once it was secured together then I kind of put some hot glue on the bar right where the ribbon meets the um, the wheel and then I just kind of pinched that together so that it looked a little bit more uniform With that same ribbon I did make a bow however I didn't like the way that it looked you guys can let me know in the comments do you like this bow or do you like the bow that I initially went with so this one all I did was cut three strips of each ribbon or no I lied three strips of the lacy one and and I do have a full tutorial on this exact bow so if you guys would like to see that video it's actually 11 super easy bows so I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner as well for you guys but I just make this very simple bow and I just kind of fold them not in half um, almost in half but leaving some tail out and then you just kind of pinch it together all of the pieces and then at the bottom you either wrap a, a zip strap or I didn't have any right here so I just used some jute wrapped it around and then to secure this to my wheel I fluffed up all the little ribbon pieces and then I tied it to the top of the wheel in between our hanger. I then just kind of played around with the tails, cutting some of them in dovetails and just kind of pushing the pieces around again till my eyes were happy. I also forgot to mention that if you guys want to find any of the chalk supplies that I used in today's video, you can find it in my link tree in the description box below where you'll see all of my links are in one spot. Click here. Again, all of the items that I use are personal preference, so if you guys don't like any of the items that I used, always remember that you can use the items that you like and make it your own. But look how gorgeous this turned out, you guys. This is why I say I cannot figure out which project is my favorite because now I'm leaning towards this one, but I absolutely love the last one and this one as well, so of course I can't make a decision. But I know you guys will let me know in the comments and would you guys have used different flowers or different greenery or would you have made it exactly like I did?
but not least, DIY number three is so super easy. I'm sorry I didn't show you which sign this is. You'll see it here in a minute, but these are the signs that I built my mini fireplace with. If you're new and you haven't seen that video, I'll also link that in the cards in the right-hand corner for you as well. But all I did was start by taking this sticker off. Of course, it gave me trouble, so I had to use my heat tool to heat up that sticker and then use my straight edge to push it off. And then, of course, I didn't have my staple pull inside. <laughs> so I used any and everything to get those staples out. And then I finally found that little mini screwdriver, or I should say flathead. And that's what I ultimately used. But if you have a staple pull, please, please use that and spare yourself some trouble. Next, I go in with my Dixie Belle cotton chalk paint and I give this a distress coat. As many of you know, your girl is super impatient, so I did use that same heat tool to dry this paint. Now, I have found with Waverly, if you try to dry it, it cracks, it, it's not a good situation. But with this Dixie Belle paint, I can get super close with a heat gun. They use Dixie Belle on like high-end furniture and stuff, so um, I think that it's just a better quality. Actually, I know for a fact it's just a better quality paint. So don't be alarmed if you use Dixie Belle. You can use heat to dry it. Next, I go in with my house pattern transfer. Look how cute this is, you guys. The possibilities are endless with all that comes in this transfer. You can reuse it so you can make gifts. You can make different signs for different parts of your house if you have different decor. Like I said, there's so many different ideas and I can't wait to do a few things for my home um, after this one. So anyway, I just take the greenery house cutout one. There's two different parts. So if you see on the right hand side, you can use kind of like that distressed square or you can use the greenery one. So I use that and use my eucalyptus paste to transfer on that greenery. That way it would match the rest of my DIYs. I did also tape off the roof part. That way I didn't accidentally, accidentally transfer any of that on. Then once I pull back that transfer, look how gorgeous that image is. It never gets old. And then I make sure to dry it really good before moving to the next step. Next, I just line up the bottom as best as possible. Now, if you want to wash this, you can. I knew that it would pull up kind of distressed, and I like that. So, I didn't worry about washing it, but if you want it to be solid, like the first um, transfer that, you, or you know, the first time you did it, then definitely take it to your sink, wash it really good with a board eraser, flip it sticky side up, and dry it with a paper towel really good, and then you can go on and do your second one. Next, I go in with my roof piece, and I transfer that on with my black chalk paste, and then I transfer on the chimney with my storm. Once again, drying in between coats because if you try to lay down a transfer while it's wet, obviously it's going to pull up that wet paste and then it's going to leave your image not looking so great. So um, just take the extra step to dry it. Trust me, I know it's a little bit annoying, but it is a small inconvenience um, to you know prevent you from having a huge inconvenience so for the wording originally i was going to do it all gray but you guys know i like my little ombre effect so i transfer on the colors that i like and then to join them together i use my squeegee to kind of join them together at first and then i take my finger with some water and then kind of do a swirl motion all the way down that line where the colors join 
I then just pull up my transfer, look how gorgeous. And then for the flowers at the bottom, I used my pesto for the leaves. I used my peachy keen for these flowers. And then for the next flowers, I did have a color similar out in my shed, but we just got like 10 inches of snow and I didn't want to run out there. So I did just mix up my own with a little bit of peachy keen, a dot of red, and a little bit of orange. And look how gorgeous that is. It matches my other flowers on the first two DIYs and I love the way that this looks. Next, I don't even know what these little brick pieces are for. <laughs> I don't know what they're for you guys, but I used them to kind of separate the flowers from the door. My thinking was this is kind of like the flower bed at the bottom and then the door, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you would have placed the flowers elsewhere, if you would have just left the bricks out, I don't know, but <laughs> I love the way that it turned out. So I guess that's all that matters because I am the one who has to look at it every day. That's my motto at least. <laughs> but anyway, I start with the left side of the bricks, then I go to the right side and then I join them together in the middle. Next, I go in with my door. Again, I transfer on I transfer that on with my black chalk paste. I meant to mention, if you guys don't have paste, you can always use chalk paint. Just be aware that your transfers will not last as long as if you were to use the paste. However, you know, it kind of evens out if that makes sense. But anyway, last but not least, I transfer on my windows. And I don't know you guys, just something about doing the chalk couture, figuring out what you're gonna use, how is it gonna look together, which colors, squeegeeing it on and then pulling the transfer back even washing it just the whole process for me is so therapeutic and whenever I'm chalking I literally am just not thinking about anything else I'm just enjoying crafting and that's something that I really look forward to okay okay my excitement in the beginning of this was not for nothing. I'm still so excited for this video, you guys. I'm absolutely loving everything, how everything turned out. So let's start out with this Choose Kindness um, sign from Dollar Tree. These are new signs. I have never seen these before because they have frames around them. See, this is what I mean when I tell you that Dollar Tree pays attention to social media and the DIYers because it seems that the things that we do they end up coming out with so a lot of the times we'll take the signs and we'll make frames for them well now they have frames so i just start by popping the frame off now generally they pop off pretty easily for some reason this one did not want to cooperate so i did have to fight with it one of the pieces broke but honestly i like rustic decor so it didn't bother me um, if that bothers you you can get another one off of a different sign or even fill it with some wood putty and then sand down that seam and it'll be flawless you won't even be able to tell that it was broken next i go in with my waverly chalk paint and give it a distress coat unfortunately i was out of my dixie bell white you guys that's how much i love it it was totally gone um, so definitely check them out i'll leave the link in the description box I gave it a little bit of heat that way it could dry quicker because as most of you know if you've been around for any length of time then you know Melissa is super impatient and then once that was dry I went out I went in with the same contact paper that I have here on my table. I also covered the front of my little fireplace DIY with this. If you haven't seen that one, it is like a Christmas or winter DIY, but a fireplace is something you can have up all year round. It is a tabletop fireplace, so it's just to display your little decor, and I love the way that turned out. So I know there's a lot of new people, so again, I'll leave that in the cards if you guys wanna check that out. Once that was done, originally I cut it right at the edge, which, which I wish I would have done all the way around, but I ended up just cutting the other corners and then folding them over. Now, the reason I said I wish I hadn't done that was because right here we're gonna glue the frame back down. So I was gonna start with the bottom and then I realized that the sides need to go on first. So I started with the sides and then once I had the entire frame glued down, on the side that I cut it flush with the sign, it wanted to pull up. So I guess I should say I wish that I had 
um, folded it over on all of the sides. I set that aside to work on the wreath and I take a grapevine wreath from Hobby Lobby and some greenery or I should say floral picks from Dollar Tree and I just cut away the picks from the stem. Now I didn't have my wire cutters inside. Right now I'm working in the house. Um, I can't wait to get to the new house with my shed and get all set up. I cannot wait to get back in my shed you guys. Trust me I am itching to do a bigger project. I just don't have the space or you know it's winter so it's hard to use the tools in the house anyway it's a whole thing um but anyway i just cut the green part so kind of like the plastic part on the pick and then once i got it down to the wire then i just bent it back and forth a few times and it came right off is this the easiest or more or most efficient way to do this? Absolutely not. So if you have wire cutters, please use those. Um, but I just had to use what I have on hand. That's the beauty about DIY. Sometimes we have to use um, non-conventional items to DIY with and that's okay. So once I had all of the greenery off of the pick and my fingers were hurting from <laughs> bending the wire back and forth, I just start by pushing the picks into the grapevine wreath. That's why I love these grapevine wreaths so much because you really don't need glue unless you're going to glue on like some embellishments or something like that. But for the most part, you can arrange this just by shoving the ends of the picks into the grapevine wreath. Now I left this part in because I last I asked in my last video if you guys enjoyed seeing my process of how I arrange things. I always cut it down short or speed it up, um, but if you guys want to see that, then I'm more than happy to leave that in for you guys. If you guys are enjoying my content and would like to see more like it in the future, I would love if you would become part of my crafty family and then you just click that bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload and also those thumbs up really help my channel to grow. So it would mean so much to me if you guys would give this video a big thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't enjoy it at all. Once I was satisfied with the way that my wreath looked, I laid it down on my sign to make sure that it would fit correctly and then I went in with a chip brush and my antique Waverly Wax and I just dry brushed all the way around the edges as well as on the inside of the sign just to make it look a little bit old and weathered. Next, I go in with my welcome transfer. Now, unfortunately, this one is retired, but I just couldn't find anything else that would fit at the bottom. I tried to use other things and I just was wasting time. So I went in with my welcome transfer and my black chalk paste, and then I peel back that amazing transfer to reveal that gorgeous image. I also forgot to mention that I fuzz my transfer before I use it, meaning I get a little bit of fuzz on the back. That way when I lay it down on my surface and peel it up, it doesn't stick and stretch my transfer. And then that way I can keep it nice for future uses. Um, Chalkator claims 12 uses out of each, but me and many other designers have got upwards of 50 uses as long as you take care of yours. As you can see, I just made kind of like a half a bow. So I took this tan ribbon that I had, I folded it in half, glued it, and then created a ribbon out of it. But I just, or I should say a bow, but I hated the way that it looked. So I um, trashed that and I just got a bigger piece and left it full. And then I made a simple bow with that. And then to attach it to my wreath, all I did was take a piece of jute in the middle. So before you tie it, you just tie it around the wreath and then you 
make your ribbon or your bow and you attach it to your wreath. So essentially you're killing two birds with one stone. I then cut the ends in dovetails, I fluff it up, and then I glue the wreath to my sign, and that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I feel like they revamped those fuzzy floral picks from Dollar Tree this year. I know that these are not new, but like I said, I feel like they revamped them. You guys can let me know in the comments down below, were these the exact same ones they had last year and the years prior, or are these brand new? Did they revamp them? I don't know about you, but I cannot get enough of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree. I just cannot get over that at the time they were a dollar a piece. They're a really good size. Now they are a little bit thin, but what do you expect for a dollar or a dollar twenty-five? So I feel that for the price, this is a really good bang for your buck. Now I know a lot of you guys have not been able to get your hands on these, but I always go to the Dollar Tree D Stash group on Facebook, and if I can't find something, they'll find it for you now you do have to pay a little bit extra plus paypal fees and shipping but if you want the item bad enough then desperate times call for desperate measures but i just start off with the transfer that i want to use this transfer and the other chalk couture items that i used in this video if they are available on the site i will link it in my link tree you'll see um, a few links down um, chalk couture items used in February 7th video and then click that link it'll take you to the cart and all the items will be in your cart you can add and subtract from your cart as you like don't forget anybody who signs up for my club couture this month will get five free b size transfers they never do this so if you guys want to be a part of my club and just needed that extra push now is the time also the new catalog comes out tomorrow the new items are absolutely amazing Oh God, help my purse. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. So I take the um, wood round, I lay my transfer down and then mark where I need the middle part to go. And then I paint the middle part white after I tape it off with my painter's tape. Once that was dry, then I tape off the top and the bottom of the white piece. And I paint that with my dried sage Dixie Belle paint. After I hit it with a little bit of heat, then of course I pull back that tape and that is another one of my favorite parts of crafting. Just little things like that. I don't, it's so silly, but it's just one of those feelings like ah, I did it. You know what I mean? But anyway, I always like to give these a really good dry. That way when I lay my transfer down, it doesn't pull up paint on the back of my transfer and, um, it's a little bit harder to get paint off of the back of the transfer. It's definitely doable, but it's a little tricky. So if I can avoid it, I do try to avoid it at all costs. Next, I wanted to make some pinstripes at the top and bottom. So once again, I just marked out the width line that I wanted. And then I paint that with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Once you peel back that tape, this is what you should be left with. Next, I take my transfer. Once again, I fuzz it. Then I take my storm chalk paste and my black chalk paste, and I do every other roof with the storm and every other body of the house with the storm. And then obviously, next I go in with my black and I do the opposite in the black. 
For the wording, I did our life, our story, and half of our home in black. And then the other half, you guys know I love my ombre effect. So I did half storm, half black. And then to join the two colors, I put a little bit of water on the edge of my finger. And then I swirl the two colors together, joining them and making them look a little bit more cohesive. You guys know what time it is peel back that transfer to reveal that amazing image now I like mine to look a little bit distressed sometimes so what I did to get that distressed look when I pull back my transfer either you can let it dry a little bit or you can just not put as much paste as you normally would Next, I made a bow out of two different ribbons. If you guys have never seen this bow tutorial, I have 11 different easy Dollar Tree bows. Um, I made a whole video on it, so I will leave that in the cards in the right-hand corner for you guys. And after I glued my um, bow down, then once again, I took some random greenery. I believe this is, yeah, I see the tag. This is from Hobby Lobby. Originally, it was $4.99. It was 40% off, so around 3 bucks. which to me, this floral looks really high-end, so that's a steal in my book. And I just cut some away from the main stem and then tucked a few pieces behind each side of the ribbon. And then to, or bow, I keep saying ribbon. <laughs> and then to finish this off, I just put a jute hanger on the back with some hot glue. And that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I can't figure out which part of the sign is my favorite. Is it the stripes? Is it the wording? What about the bow? I don't know. <laughs> But I know you guys will let me know in the comments down below. Look, you guys, I was a poet and I didn't even know it. This is another super simple one you could do in your sleep. But I made these a few years back and I made them before I had a YouTube channel. And they, they've been on my hutch and I've been wanting to show you guys. So I figured this was the perfect video. So I want to make brown faux eggs and to do that I take my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint as well as some antique wax and I get it almost to like a terracotta color and then I add a little bit of white just to lighten them up and it makes the perfect brown egg color. So I just paint all of my eggs with two very good coats drying in between each coat. Now, if you look closely at real brown eggs, you'll notice that they have little brown speckles on them. So what I did was take a paintbrush. Now this one was a bit dense, so it didn't work as well. It still did work, but it had little tiny specks. So I just dipped it in my antique wax, and then with my finger, I kind of like pull back on it. I, I know this is this has a word. I don't know what it's called, but I kind of pull back on the bristles, creating little tiny speckles. When I went in with the chip brush, it gave me larger speckles to make this look more realistic. So I definitely recommend using several different brush sizes. That way you can have different spec sizes. Next, I go in with some raffia. Now, I did not use the original raffia because it was really thin. Um, in the end, I did make a bow with it, and you'll see that here in a minute. But I went in my stash and pulled out this raffia that I got back at Christmas time. It came in a pack with red, green, and the tan raffia. Obviously, we're only using the tan. Um, but I just wrap it around the top at first and then twist at the bottom and pull it up around the sides and then tied it in the middle. Next, I go in with a piece of cardboard. I am so bad at throwing things away. This probably could have went in the trash. I probably could have found something different, but <laughs> I have problems, you guys. Send help. <laughs> Isn't it funny the things like we're like, oh my god, I can do something with that. And it's like, no girl, you probably should just throw that away. <laughs> anyway, I took the piece of cardboard 
I measured it out because I wanted to put a little sign on the front of my eggs and then I painted front and back with my Ink Waverly chalk paint after I cut it down with my utility knife. Next I went in with my Farm Fresh Produce Transfer only using the Farm Fresh and instead of placing my transfer onto my cardboard, I placed the cardboard onto the transfer. That way I know I'm getting an even fit. Next, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint. Yes, you heard me right. This was an experiment. I've never used the squeegee with the paint before, but I just wanted to try it out for you guys. And look how amazing this turned out. So if you guys are going to use chalk paint, make sure you wash your transfer immediately. Like, don't waste any time. And try it with a squeegee. It might work much better than a paintbrush but I always recommend the chalk paste. It works best with our transfers and your transfers are going to last longer. But if you're in a pinch and you're on a budget, definitely just go ahead and use what you have on hand. Don't use acrylic, that will not work, but you can definitely use chalk paint. Next, I glue my sign down to the front. Like I said, I made a little bow out of the leftover raffia, glued that to the top, and that was it, you guys. Look how cute these little faux brown eggs turned out. I absolutely love them. Like I said, I have a set. It didn't have the farm fresh on the front, but like I said, I wanted to bring this to you guys, so let me know. Did I get this color spot on? Okay, y'all, let's start off with this really fun farm fresh sign. So I take one of these tag signs from Dollar Tree. I got these back at like around Valentine's Day and they come in a two pack. They're really good size. So I definitely think that that $1.25 is definitely beneficial because we are definitely getting and seeing better items. So of course I paint this with my Dixie Belle buttercream. Now I wish it was white. I thought I had more white Dixie Belle, but I used my entire jar, so I do have to get more, and I just ended up using the buttercream for this one, and then my white Waverly for the rest, because I do need to use that up, but once I gave this a distressed coat of my Dixie Belle buttercream, then I cut up my March Club Couture transfer. Um, if you're watching this on Monday when this came out, this is your last day to sign up for Club Couture and get your five free transfers. That is a February promotion. March, there will be new promotions, and I do not want you guys to miss out, and you will receive this transfer when you sign up. So moving on, like I said, I cut them up. My kitchen cabinets are a little lighter color than this eucalyptus that I did the barn, so that's why I ended up doing the barn that color. And then, of course, I transferred on the farm fresh and the greenery at the bottom with my black chalk paste. Once I pulled up that last little greenery piece again, if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know that pulling up that transfer never gets old. And I will just tell you right now that. Um, all these projects do have chalk couture in them, so if that's not up your alley, I definitely understand. Again, I can't wait to get into my shed, but right now this is what I can do, and I love chalk couture anyway, so it is what it is. So I just dry brushed a little bit of my ink Waverly chalk paint all the way around this sign with a bigger chip brush that I got from Home Depot. And then to finish this sign off, I put some jute back at the top on that hanger. And then I made a simple, easy, triple jute bow. If you guys have never seen my bow video, I can link that in the cards in the right hand corner. I've been doing this finger bow trick since I've been on YouTube and I think about a year ago, I finally did a bow tutorial, so I will link that for you guys. Once I had my bow all cut, made sure that the ends were even, then I just hot glued it to the top, and that quick and easy, you guys, you have a perfectly gorgeous farm fresh farmhouse sign for your kitchen or really anywhere you'd like to put it. That's the thing about farmhouse decor. It doesn't have to be specific to the space you're putting it in um, and that's what I love most about it. Moving on to this double-sided sign. Now originally I was going to use that little blessed as well as the homestead. Now in the end I did not use the blessed but I still think it's gorgeous and I'll definitely be using that for a different project. Now on Instagram my wood rounds are a fan favorite so I really wanted to do a double-sided wood round now this is a wood round from Dollar Tree I take my transfer cut it up 
As always, all of the transfers and all of the Chalk Couture products that I used will be linked in my link tree in the description box below. You'll see Chalk Couture items used here, and then you'll also see my Chalk Couture link once you click that initial link. You can also find my Amazon store and so many other things there as well. So I mark it, and then I, obviously I use my painter's tape to um, tape that off and put a white strip in the middle or actually it's towards the bottom I did that on purpose um, but I painted that with my white Waverly chalk paint once that was dry I put my tape down again to protect that white and then I gave the top and the bottom a distressed coat of ink Waverly chalk paint next I go in with my the homestead transfer and I make sure that my black is stirred up really good I make this mistake all the time and then I don't stir it and it comes up not good so anyway make sure that you stir your paste or if you use chalk paint no worries just make sure you wash your transfer really really good that way you can get as many uses out of it as you can and then I transferred on the wording obviously with the black and the greenery on with my eucalyptus now I hit that with some heat to make sure that it's dry before I move on to the next step look how gorgeous this farmhouse tile transfer is oh my god you guys i can't get enough i want to transfer on i want to do this to everything i was thinking can i do this to my floor you guys can literally do anything with these you can do a backsplash you can do your floor you can do a shower and then seal it like oh my goodness there is so many options but anyway once my black was dry then obviously this is a huge transfer so make your life easier nobody says you don't you have to leave it whole i like to cut mine up that way it's much easier to use now you can keep yours whole it's harder to wash and it's harder to use however i mean it's still doable now look how gorgeous this is you guys so once i was done the top part then i flipped it and did the bottom part and i absolutely this is my favorite so once i was done that side then i flipped it over i gave it a distress coat i almost said good coat <laughs> i gave it a distress coat of my dried sage dixie belt look how gorgeous this color is and then once again i use that transfer and i use the bottom piece once again transferring on as much as i could and then i just flipped it once it was dry and then i transferred on the rest now i could have went and got the other piece but honestly i do not mind the way that it looked so i just flipped it and went with it that way i only have one transfer to wash now i personally like the distressed um coat i i purposely do mine like that I don't press down as hard in certain spots because I like the way that it looks but if you don't like that look and you want a clean finish just make sure that you press down evenly and you get your paste or your you know chalk paint whatever you're using on your transfers make sure that you get it through the screen completely once that was dry then I took my my roost my rules transfer I was just gonna use or originally I was going to do something different like I said I was going to do the blessed but I decided to just put the rooster in there I thought that it just looked great against that farmhouse tile and I truly love the simplicity of it so let me know in the comments down below which side of this sign is your favorite Okay guys, now this is the bonus DIY I was telling you about. I've had these canisters for a few weeks now and I have been waiting for this transfer to get here so that I could do the canisters myself. So I took the label transfer, I cut off the one that I liked, and then for you know the wording i got the flour the coffee and the sugar but of course if you get these or have these you can transfer on whatever you like in any color that you please so i chose black and white obviously my main colors in my kitchen are that farmhousey green it's actually the color of the year which i had no idea when i painted the kitchen cabinets that however that's what i picked i really don't know why you guys i was thinking gray but once we went to go pick a color 
I just thought that color was gorgeous. So my main colors are that green, black, and white. So I did my labels all in black. And then the trick to this, because I was really afraid that when I pulled up the wording, then the chalk paste would come up since this is you know, like a metal tin, but all I did was just fuzz my wording really, really, really good. And then when I laid it down, I just kind of dropped it on and lightly smoothed out right where the letters were. That way, you know, the rest of the transfer wasn't too stuck. And then when I pulled it up, I was just very, very, very gentle and it came out perfectly. I love these so much. Now, you're going to see here in a minute that you can stack them side by side. However, I personally love the way that they look stacked one on top of another. So that's another question I have for you. If you guys were displaying this in your kitchen, would you display them one on top of another or would you display them side by side? Okay, friends, so if you have been around with me for a while, then you know last year I made this little farmhouse decor shelf that everybody fell in love with, me included. I loved that project so much. And then after that, I ended up collabing with Bargain Bethany. You heard me right. The myth, the legend, the woman. I love her so much. She is such a sweet person and she was kind enough to do a video with me where I kind of took a project that she did and recreated it and then she took a project that I did and recreated it and she took my farmhouse shelf and made a little spice rack. So for this video, I thought that it would be super cute and I did want a spice rack like this in my kitchen anyway. I just ordered these gorgeous spices, which you'll see in a minute that the spices I ended up having to display in here, they look a hot mess because I ended up throwing a bunch of spices away so that I could order this new set. But anyway, that's besides the point. So I took four of these boxes from Dollar Tree, obviously glued them together with some wood glue, and I made sure that they were really nicely glued before I clamped them together just because as you guys know these uh, Dollar Tree boxes are really wonky. Once they were dry I used my antique wax to stain it giving it like a distress coat and then I took some uh, stir sticks from Home Depot. I cut those down where the labels will go with my saw. I showed you guys that you can use a miter box and a um, hand saw. That would work perfectly fine. However, I like to make my life a lot easier. So I have one of those saws. I love it so much. And then I painted my stir sticks white. Once I was done, I would glow I would glued those to the bottom of my like each rack putting some heavy stuff on it to make sure that they stay in place and then once that was dry I have a new transfer that goes it's kind of like a little jar add-on a jar cutout add-on it has you know the names of the spices and then like a picture of the spice so what I did was I just cut off the words and then I transferred those on to my little spice rack once I was done I still felt that it was missing just a little something so all I did was take the end of my paintbrush in my black chalk paste. Now you can use chalk paint, acrylic paint, any paint will work for this part. Don't, do not ever, do not ever put acrylic paint in your transfers. It will ruin it. It'll be a mess. Just don't do it. Trust me. But for this part, you can use anything. I just dipped it in the end of my paste and then put little dots on either side of the wording just to make it look a bit more finished. And I absolutely love the way that this turned out. Again, I know my spices look silly, but sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. Okay, friends, this one is so easy. 
Once again, I'm going to be using this farmhouse tile. I cannot get enough of it. I love it so much. So anyway, I took this little cutting board from Dollar Tree. A sweet subscriber sent this to me and I wanted to use it in my new kitchen. So I just kind of taped off where I eyeballed it. There was no rhyme or reason for, you know, the white space that I did. But I did just tape that off and paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint. Once again, I laid my farmhouse tile down on that white space and I transferred that tile on with my black chalk paste, making sure that I didn't go past where my transfer was. Next, I just pulled it up to reveal that gorgeous image and then I taped it off once again so that I could use my antique wax at the bottom to stain this essentially and then I pulled the tape back and that was it for this one you guys I told you this one was super simple super easy but I think that it would make a gorgeous statement piece sitting on a shelf or on your countertop in your kitchen and I am actually going to have open shelves in my kitchen so this is where I pictured all this stuff to go Okay guys, this is the last double-sided DIY. So I guess the last two DIYs and they are so simple. I've explained this over and over so you don't need me to do it again, but I did take the transfer of choice. Now originally I was just gonna do the kitchen sign, but I loved <laughs> I loved the set the second saying so I was like that's okay I could just make this a double sided sign. I also have a ton of space above my counter or above my cabinets. So I have so much decor to make you guys to you know suit my taste above there and on my open shelves. There's just so much to do and I'm really trying to not get stressed because you know, I just keep telling myself I'll do what I can and that's all I can do, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, all of this stuff, like I said, I had in mind for either my open shelves or above the cabinets. So I loved that I could just flip this around when I was tired of it. Look how cute this is. Many have eaten here. Few have died. And then when I flipped it over, this one says, welcome to our kitchen. And I love the little detail in the eye with the whisk. It's got little flowers in it. And I transferred on the wording with the black. And then obviously I did the whisk with the white. Once again, making sure to fuzz my transfer before I lay it down. And then once I pull it up, you always want to pull slowly don't pull up super quick because you could get a little bit of running or um, it just won't look as nice so that is one of my biggest tips okay friends I'm so excited to show you guys how to make this little sign so we're gonna start off with two of these love signs from Dollar Tree that I got back at Valentine's Day and I like these because they are a little bit thicker than they are longer or I should say they're wider um, than they are the longer skinnier signs if you guys know what I'm talking about so I take two of them take the hanger off and then I take jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart and I it together now don't <laughs> don't make the same mistake I did I do this all the time I glue on the wrong side of the sign you always want to glue on the side that has the design on it that way when you flip it over you have a flat clean surface to work with so once I uh, fixed my boo-boo and my mistake I flipped it over to the right side that I needed to glue it and then I took my jumbo popsicle sticks once again and used my Gorilla Hot Glue to glue that down. I did three and then in between the three I cut down a, another one and then glued those to the middle just giving it some more stability. Next I go in with my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. I put those in the I put it in the holes and then I quickly realized that I needed something behind the sign to hold that lightweight spackling in so all I did was cut up the same jumbo popsicle sticks that I just used just little strips and then glued those down to the back of the holes and then continued to um, spackle the holes so I wanted to make this a box originally this was just going to be a porch leaner sign 
I wasn't going to go any further. My daughter um, had to go th to the doctor, so I didn't have enough time to do the projects that I wanted to do. Um, so I was just going to do a quick sign, and then I was like, you know what? This would be really, really cool with a planner box at the bottom. So I start off with these pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. Um, two of the pieces are square wood pieces, and then the other piece, I don't know the exact measurement, but it is a good size. I'll grab the measurement for you guys and leave that in the description box below. But I just measure the width of my sign, mark it, cut that down. Next, I cut down some square dowels to fit on the sides of my box. That way, when I go to attach this, they attack they attach really easily to attach the wood dowels to my square pieces i just used a combination of wood glue as well as some hot glue the wood glue is going to make sure that your hold is going to last and the hot glue is going to hold it quickly once i had all of my dowels um, glued down to either side of the squares then i glue that down with the same glue combination Next, I take another piece of wood from Dollar Tree, I hold it up to the bottom of my box, mark it, cut it down, and then glue that down as well. Because I wanted the bottom to be a nice snug fit, I did end up taking off one of the sides, adjusting the bottom piece of wood, and then attaching the side piece once I had that bottom piece where I wanted it. Next, I go in with my Voodoo Dixie Belt Gel Stain, and I just stain my entire box. I love this color so much. It dries so quickly. It's just like the stain that I create with paint and water. Um, it's water-based, and it's non-toxic, so that's another reason I love it. Um, when I'm pregnant, I try to stick to as many non-toxic products as I can, and I just absolutely love the Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. So definitely check out DixieBell.com, not affiliated or anything. I just love their products. I then sand down my spackle holes and then tape off at the top and the bottom, making sure to take my vinyl cut out and lay it down. That way it doesn't um, overlap on my stripes. I kind of wanted that brown to show through since the uh, box at the bottom was going to be brown. I wanted to tie the colors together. So I just taped that off and gave it a distress coat of my Dixie Bell um, chalk paint in caviar. And then I hit it with my blow dryer just to ensure that it's really dry and it dries quickly because if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then and you know that I am super impatient. When I pull back that tape, I just love those crisp lines. And then I go in with some hot glue and I just glue my box down to the bottom. Now, if you wanted to make this a sturdier hold, you can use like super glue and you could also like staple this from the back, but I was kind of in a time crunch. So um, when I get a spare moment, I will definitely do that. But for now, um, hot glue held it just fine. To finish this off, um, I wanted some kind of decoration in the front. I've had these Would You Bend little decorations. I'm not really sure what to call it for the longest time. And I thought that taking one of these and painting it white and then taking my antique gold rub and buff and just lightly um, painting some strokes over that would look really really cool on the front of this box so that's exactly what i did and then to attach this to my box i just used a little bit of hot glue Let me know down in the comments, would you guys have left this box plain or do you like that little detail that I added to it? So now we need to cut our design. I'm going to take you guys to the design space. You're going to open a new project and you're going to start off measuring your sign and adding a square to your canvas. Once you have your square to your canvas, then up at the top where the size is, you're going to unlock it. I couldn't figure it out for a second, but you're going to unlock it and then you're going to add in your measurements. You then just want to, down in the left hand corner, you're going to um, click it down to 25%, that way you could see your whole canvas. 
and I personally could not find a design that I liked on Design Space for this particular design. So all I did was went to Google, I typed in the keywords that I wanted to find, I came up with an image and I bought it for $1.99. It's totally worth it because if not, then you have to go in and like clear out all the negative space for your design. And when you buy them, it's already done for you. So once I purchase it, I download it to my computer. I then go into Cricut Design Space on the left hand side and click upload. I then add that into my design space and then I'm going to add that into my canvas. Next I'm going to click on my design. I'm going to unlock that sizing as well and then you can take it in the corner and you can just adjust it from the corner or you could once again type in your measurements. But I personally once I have my square or my shape there and the reason for that I meant to mention is that way you can see your sign on the canvas and with your design you can play with the sizing as if your sign was right in front of you before you cut it you're going to delete that and then click make it if you're going to make it from your phone like I am you're just going to save it to the cloud at the right at the top right hand corner of design space you're just going to click save save your project and then once you pull up design space on your phone all you have to do is click the three lines at the top right hand corner click projects in the cloud select your project and then go through the prompts on your phone it literally um, gives you prompts it's really not hard to do you guys and I just wanted to tell you guys why I love the Cricut Maker 3 so much it quickly and accurately cuts 300 plus materials from the most delicate paper and fabric to tougher stuff like mat board leather and balsa wood you can make the most amazing projects with balsa wood they also have more tools so the Maker 3 offers the widest range of tools for cutting scoring writing adding decorations decorative effects and much more. I also love the new look of the machine um, and also my favorite favorite feature is all of the matless materials that cuts your project time down so much and I can appreciate that because it does take some time but with the new smart cutting materials you can get projects done so much faster. You can customize it to your liking, click make it and then all you have to do is follow the on screen prompts. The Cricut is a smart cutting machine that allows you to create personalized personalized projects with hundreds of materials. It works with a software called Design Space that comes free with your machine and this is where you can create your projects and browse from hundreds of images and fonts. Once you've created your design, like I said, Design Space will just send it right to your machine to cut. Once it cuts out, then all you have to do is weed it. Now, depending on your project, you might have to reverse weed it or regular weed it. For this particular project, I did not have to reverse weed it. And once I was done, I attached it to my transfer tape and then I laid it down on my sign and I pulled back the transfer tape. Now, the trick with this is make sure you go very slow. You are watching where you are pulling and also, the biggest trick is to fold this down flat and pull it flat over the vinyl and that's going to make your life 10 times easier. You can also take your scraper tool and kind of scrape it down while you're pulling the transfer tape um, and if that makes absolutely no sense you can see what I'm doing here but that's also a really good technique that helps out a lot. Now this does take some time and some patience, but with a little bit of time and patience, you can make the most amazing signs and uh, projects. I just absolutely love the way that this porch leaner turned out. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this project.
Okay friends, moving on to the next project. This was so super easy. All I did was take a sign from Dollar Tree. I took my mini chip brush and that same Dixie Belle Voodoo stain that we used in the previous project. And I just lightly dry brushed some of that stain around that natural wood. And then to give it a little bit of dimension and character, I took some more of that rub and buff on the end of my paintbrush and just randomly gave it some streaks throughout the wood. I also gave it some random streaks in the chalkboard part and then I took some white Waverly chalk paint and that same mini chip brush dry brushed a little bit as well and then I took a wet paper towel and I just wanted to tone down that distressing a little bit. Next I go into my Cricut design space and I ended up finding um wording that I liked. I did not find an image that I liked. So what I did was I, I measured the bottom square of the house and then I put that into design space with the measurements. I then took a triangle and I just attached it to the top of that square. That way I could kind of get an idea of how to place my design. So I ended up picking out that market fresh produce wording and then I wanted like a truck at the top but I just could not find a truck or any design that I truly like. So once again I used several different um, design you know, sites. One is designbundles.net, um, but that didn't really have a truck that I liked. So I just went to Google. I typed in um, farmhouse truck or something of that nature. And then I found this gorgeous one. I love the little lamb on the bales of hay in the back of the truck. So that's why I ultimately went with that one. When you buy images, Sometimes they will send it to your email. That's what this place did. So I just went into my email. I downloaded it to my computer once again and inserted it into design space. Next, I unlocked the sizing again, and then I just got it to the size that I liked it. I fixed it on my quote unquote sign. So like my fake sign in design space. And then I put the wording underneath once I was satisfied with the way that it looked. Then I removed the triangle and the square from the back of the design. And then I selected the entire thing and welded it together. What that's going to do is when you send it to your machine, rather than it cutting the truck and the wording separate, it's going to cut it as one design. Once again, I click make it, send it to my machine, and then follow the prompts on the screen so that my machine can cut out my design. One trick that I've learned for weeding is if you have a light pad. Now, I actually have the Cricut light pad just in the move. It got uh, packed away, and I just have not gotten to that box just yet. But I did have this cheap little um, light pad, which I was very, very thankful for. And it helps you to see all of those little details much better than if you were to just weed it regularly. Once I had this one weeded, once again, I take my transfer tape and I pull up my design from the backing sheet. Last but not least, I lay my design down on my sign, making sure to smooth it down so that way the vinyl sticks to my sign. And then I go in, or and then I just go ahead and take that transfer tape off. Now, because this design had such little teeny details, I did go in with some tweezers and just remove those little um, letters. I'm sure you cannot see it, but it says life is better in the country in the hay bales. I think that would be a really, really cute sign by itself but nonetheless look how cute it looks at the top of this sign and I just absolutely love the way that it turned out let me know down in the comments what you guys think Okay, friends, moving on to our last and final project. If you guys made it this far, <laughs> 
if you guys made it this far, leave me a heart down in the comment section. That way I know that you're still here. But I just went on Design Space. I picked out a cute little design. This one says Farm Sweet Farm. And I used my black permanent vinyl to cut it out. Now this is the smart cutting material. And this tray that you see that attaches to your machine is going to hold the entire roll. That way, if you have really big size projects, you don't have to cut and measure it first. You just set your roll right into um, this little tray and it feeds it into the machine. And then once it's done, if you see that blue little button to the left, all you have to do is slide it. It cuts your design and you can put your roll away. Obviously next, once it's done cutting, then I weed it and attach it to my transfer tape. Now I kind of did this backwards. I should have did my house before I pulled my design up, but that's okay. I just left it sticky side up somewhere where my kids couldn't get to it while I work on this part. So I take this little house wood cutout from Dollar Tree and I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I go in with my design and I lay it down however I like it. Now, it did hang off the edges a little bit. I guess I um, messed up my measurements a little bit because this originally was going to be a totally different project and I tried three times, you guys. It just kept flopping and I was just so over it that this was plan B. So anyway, um, I laid down my design. I cut off the excess that hung off the edges and then I removed my transfer tape very, very carefully. Last but not least, I glue my sign down to this little chalkboard from Dollar Tree and then I made a simple bow out of this gorgeous farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree, glued that down to the house as well. And that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I love that white house against that chalkboard. I don't know, would you guys have just left the house alone or would you have attached it to the chalkboard? Oh my gosh, you guys, look at these signs. They're only um, like $7.50 because they're 50% off. So I'm gonna pick one up and let's get it into the craft room. First things first, I take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Now this is just like the stain that I make on my own, like paint and water. It dries really quickly and it's water-based. So I take a paintbrush and I just spread that out as evenly as possible. And then I take one of these little rags. I believe they're called like stain rags or paint rags. Don't quote me. But I go ahead and I remove the excess. I then take that same exact paintbrush and I'm a lazy crafter sometimes, you guys. So... I just kind of poured my stain right on my brush to do the edges and I very carefully go around making sure that the edges are um, covered. Next I go in with my Waverly white chalk paint and I go in and paint that design. Now this is a little tricky to paint just because of that design. You have to kind of make sure that you're getting into every crack and crevice or else it won't look right so i just took my time this really did not take long when i first started this i was a little nervous that i'd be here all day but surprisingly this went pretty quickly and i did only have to put one coat on this design Next, I go in with my large chip brush and that same white Waverly chalk paint, and I just dry brush all the way around that middle circle, and then I also dry brush in the middle. Now, as I always tell you guys, dry brushing is optional. I personally like it on my decor, but if you don't like that look, you can totally keep that out. Anything I bring to you guys is just for inspiration. This is stuff that I'm creating for my home most of the time, unless I'm specifically doing a theme DIY for you guys. This is decor that I'm making for my home, so I make it to my heart's desire, and I encourage you to do the same thing for your own home decor. Next, I go in with a tiny chip brush 
that all you guys sold out and I can't find anywhere. That's okay. Um, I just dry brushed some of that stain right around that designed part. Now last week I had mentioned that I bought the kit to create my own stencils at home. I'm not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, you guys. I wanted to try it out so that I could compare the um, techniques for you guys. But in this video, I do just test this out. I was itching to try it. I will tell you guys it was much easier than I anticipated. Um, but subscribe if you guys want to see a comparison video on all the different ways to create your own stencils or basically kind of just comparing and contrast comparing and contrasting all the different um, stencil mediums. You can make your own, you can buy them, etc, etc. So again, like I said, this was really super easy. All you really have to do is print it out on this special paper they give you. Um, you have to make sure your design is really, really dark. Then you're just going to layer it and lay it under a UV black light. You turn your light on, and then you essentially just wash it out and you're left with your transfer. Now, it sounds like, you know, that was really quick, which it did take a little bit of time, which was to be expected. It was my first time and I'm, I'm learning. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited to share um, a video about it with you guys. So let me know again if that's something you're interested in. So anyway, I created that gorgeous little chicken. I transferred that on with my white chalk paste. I then went in with my chalk couture farmhouse transfer. Now I was going to create another farmhouse word with my new kit but you guys I just didn't have time so I just grabbed the chalk couture it's quick it's easy um, and it was right there and then I don't, my camera keeps shutting off but I did stencil on that local and fresh from a Dollar Tree flexible stencil with some white Waverly chalk paint and then obviously I glue some greenery down some lamb's ear and a bow at the bottom and that was it you guys I absolutely absolutely love the way that this sign turned out. It goes so well with all my kitchen decor and all my farmhouse decor and I'm so excited to be getting back into farmhouse decor. If you guys are tired of farmhouse decor, let me know or if you're as excited as me, let me know as well. Okay guys, moving on to project number two. Now this piece was only $3.50, which once again I felt was a good deal. I loved the little leather detail on it, and this was pretty good size as well, and it's also pretty thick. So anyway, I start out by giving it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was good and dry, I went in with my mini chip brush and some of that oak gel stain and I just dry brush all the way around the edges once again as well as the entire piece. Once again, if dry brushing is not your forte, then you can totally leave it out. I went on my computer and I designed this file. Now I did take out the Norman and I will leave the free printable in the description box below for you guys as well as in the pinned comment. That way all you'll have to do is just open this up and then print your last name. Um, and I'll also leave the name of the font that I used down there as well. So I just take a piece of graphite paper and my pencil, I trace that on, and then I use my black paint pen to go over the wording that I traced on. Now I felt this needed a little bit of color, so I went into my stash and found these little rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree, and I thought that they were perfect. So all I did was just cut out a few of, you know, the pieces, and before I went and I rubbed them down to transfer them, because essentially what you're doing is um, you're trying to get that adhesive warmed up pretty much to stick to your surface. So before I do that, I want to make sure that I like the place and once I'm satisfied with the placement, then I go ahead and just use whatever random object that I had nearby to rub these down and transfer them on. I felt that that was not quite enough, so I did go in with some more just to make that look a little bit more full. 
as you can see here i'm using my dollar tree picker that i hauled last week if you guys have not seen that dollar tree haul i will link it in the cards in the right hand corner and i compared the cricut one just side by side and you guys there's literally no difference i cannot tell a difference between the cricut picker and the dollar tree one so i did just want to mention that but once i was done then it's time to embellish this and finish this sign off so i took some jute at the top I tied it in the back and then I wrapped it around several times, cut it in the back and then glued that to another piece of the jute. My thinking was if I wanted to do something on the back of this project, I could just easily take that jute off. And then once again, my stupid camera cut off, but I did end up taking that faux leather from Dollar Tree. I glued it at the bottom of my sign stuck some push pins on either side and then i rubbed them down with my rub and buff i did my push pins as well as the nail or grommet at the top of the leather hanger of this sign and that was it you guys i love it so much it goes with all my decor let me know in the comments down below what you guys think Okay guys, now this was one of the more pricey buys, but I just loved the way that this looked. It looked antique and vintage to me. I don't know how to explain it, but I just had to have it when I saw it. It was $24.99 originally, 50% off. Um, and then I bought the greenery. The greenery was a little pricey as well, but it wasn't too bad. I believe the greenery came out to be like $4 per bunch. Six dollars per bunch four or six dollars per bunch i'll try to find the receipt for you guys and leave it somewhere in the pin comment i'm not sure but anyway don't quote me i grabbed two of the greenery as well as this tin now i don't mind spending money on good quality items look how amazing this tin is and look how amazing this greenery is i'm not really too worried about spending money on good products so anyway you guys this just needed a little zhuzhing all i did was glue some buffalo check ribbon at the bottom i then wrapped some jute around the buffalo check i made a triple jute bow glued that to the right hand corner put my greenery in, fluffed it up, and that was it, you guys. This literally took me about 10 minutes to do, and I absolutely love the transformation, and it matches the rest of my decor perfectly. Oh shoot, you guys, look, it's the rectangle one. I almost just left, and then I looked around the corner, and they had the rectangle one just like the circle one. So let's pick it up and see what we can come up with. Starting off, I take that same Dixie Belle paint that we originally stained the round sign in the middle with. So it's the Voodoo stain. It's just like um, paint and water. It's water-based, so it's really easy to spread, and it dries really quickly. So I just carefully spread that out all the way around those edges. And then once that was done, so basically we are reversing the signs. So for the rectangle, we're going to do white on white with the brown um, interior. And then for the round one, we did the brown on brown with the white interior. Once again, you know the drill. I take that same stain and my mini chip brush and I dry brush all the way around the white in the middle of the white as well as I take my white Waverly chalk paint and dry brush on the interior of this sign. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I take these galvanized animals from Dollar Tree. They are the farm animals, the chicken, the cow, and the pig. And I just start by taking off the hangers. And then for the chicken, I needed him reversed. So I did take his sticker off. But the other ones, we're going to be gluing them down with the sticker to the back. So I didn't worry about that. But if that is a pet peeve of yours, then you can certainly take that off. And once I was satisfied with the placement of my animals, then I just use some hot glue to glue them down. Next, I go in with that same stain, same chip brush, and I wanted these to kind of look rusted on the edges, which I'm not really sure if it turned out looking that way. You guys can let me know what you think, um, but I did just dry brush all the way around the animals, and then I felt that it was missing something, and I, as I honestly... <laughs> And I honestly was not too sure like what to put on here. So I just kind of looked around and I did have these chocotour words, farm fresh and the eat local. It's all one transfer. It came in one of my monthly club couture subscriptions. Um, so originally I was just going to do that farm fresh, eat local, boom, done. And then once I was looking at it, I was like, oh, I still feel like it's missing something. So this transfer had a barn in it. So I did transfer that on to the top. Now I know it cut off, but I, I thought it kind of looked cool. I don't know, you guys. Then I kept, I kept going back and forth. Should I color in the sides of the barn? Should I not? I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, I decided not to. And then last but not least, I took that little greenery. I transferred that on down at the bottom. And that was it, you guys. I am pretty pleased with the way it turned out. I still can't decide if I should have painted the sides of the barn in. So once again, I know you guys will let me know down in the comments below. Okay guys, last but not least, this is the bonus DIY because obviously this is not a wood blank DIY, but I picked up these little um, embellishments for a dollhouse. I wasn't really too sure, but I loved the arch windows and the little word, and they were only 99 cents, so I just picked it up and was going to put it in my stash, and then I realized that I could make a beaded garland with it. So I take out the arches and I glue them um, back side to back side. That way, no matter which side of this you saw, it still was finished. And I used my gel super glue um, to do that, which I got that trick from my friend over at Liz Moore Decal and Decor. So if you have not checked out her channel, go check her out. She swears by this glue and now I can see why because it literally held in like two seconds. I then take out 24 wooden beads and I take eight and eight and eight. I leave eight of them natural and then stain the other two sets with some, or I should say spray painted with some white Waverly chalk or white chalk paint spray paint and some black spray paint. Once they were completely done, then I just alternated the colors, strung them on my white jute, and then I tied on that little arch window to the end of one of the sides. I cut that off. Now we're going to make a tassel. I'm sorry that this is out of frame, you guys. You'll see here in a minute. Um, after I tied this off and cut it off, then I take some natural colored jute and I wrap it around my hand 25 times. Once I was done wrapping it around my hand, then I pull it off of my hand. Now, originally, I had added this to my beaded garland without that buffalo check ribbon mixed in, but I felt that it was a little plain, and I wanted to tie it in with all my other pieces, so all I did was take a very thin piece of buffalo check ribbon, I cut it in half, and added that to my jute, ran like one on the bottom, one on the top, and then tied that off at the top, and then I strung the end of my beaded garland through that top loop making sure to tie this very tightly against the beads and double knot it and that was it you guys 
Beaded garland is so fun and easy to make. Let me know what you guys think of this beaded garland. And that was it for this video, you guys. I had so much fun making all these projects. Dollar Tree is not the end all be all, you guys. Um, and I encourage you to look elsewhere for really, really nice wood blank um, pieces at an affordable price. And this project turned out beautifully. So we're going to start off with this wood round tray sign, whatever you want to call it. Originally it was $22.99. I got it on sale for 50% off at Hobby Lobby Hobby Lobby during their spring sale and I take the stain that I picked up from Hobby Lobby that same day and I give it a good coat on the bottom as well as the inside bottom if that makes sense. Now this stain was pretty hard to work with. It's a gel stain so my foam brush was working a lot better than that brush that you just saw me using did. However, the foam brush and the paintbrush both were really difficult to use with this stain but it's such a beautiful color that I just stuck with it and once you get the hang of it then it's not as difficult but just know that gel stain is a little bit trickier to work with than a traditional stain or a water-based stain so like I said I stained the bottom and then I'm just going to do the inside bottom as well focusing on the edges at first and then staining the inside so I set that to dry and then I took my candlestick holders that I got in the same Hobby Lobby trip and I painted those with my fluff Dixie Bell paint I wasn't really strict on getting every single piece of it covered because we're going to distress these anyway so no big deal if you give these a distress coat of paint next i go in to that outer edge of this tray and i also give that a distress coat of my dixie bell fluff white paint And then for the inner edge, now this is a little bit tricky to do, but if you just take your time, you don't need to tape it off or anything. Just lean this up if you decide to do this project. Lean it up and then it's really easy to just load up your brush and run it along that edge. As long as you're really careful and you take your time, it's really not hard to stay away from that bottom part. So once that was done then I go into the middle of course y'all know me if you've been around for any amount of time I love my dry brushing um, I'm doing away with it so much but for this project I just felt to tie all of the pieces together that the um, white dry brushing would look really nice so I did go heavy-handed dry brush on the inside if you don't like dry brushing totally skip that part. Now again to tie in the brown I go in with that stain that I used and I also go heavy handed dry brushing on the edges. Now before we put the feet on I wanted to show you how cute this is for just like a little ottoman rest. I don't know what you want to call it. Let me know in the comments what you would call this. I guess an ottoman tray. I'm not really too sure, but I love this look as well. So let me show you the next look. So take the feet and you're going to distress those with that stain once again so everything ties together. Now for the feet, I did wipe it off after I dry brush because I did go pretty heavy handed and the reasoning for this was I wanted the feet to stand out so that way when it's sitting on your table you can really see those gorgeous details so that's the reason I went pretty heavy handed but once again if you don't like dry brushing just leave it out. In order to get our feet evenly placed, I put my tape measure down and then I marked 11 and a half inches since, or 11 inches, I'm sorry, since this is a 22 inch round, um, 11 is your middle. So I just kind of made um, two marks on either side because this was not long enough to go across the whole thing and mark it. So I wanted to make sure that they would line up evenly. So I just made a mark on either side of my tape measure measure and I did that for both sides and then I placed a mark where the crosses would be on all four corners if that makes sense. 
Now to finish this off, all I did was take some wood glue, put that on my candlestick holder, and then I also placed a few dabs of hot glue wherever I did not have wood glue because the wood glue is going to ensure that your hold lasts and the hot glue is going to make sure that it uh, holds quickly that way you don't have it moving around on you and then last but not least I place them down and I absolutely love the way that this turned out you guys I made this for about 12 bucks because I also got the feet on sale so let me know actually I don't think the candlestick I'm not sure. I don't think the candlesticks were on sale, but nonetheless, even if this did cost me 15 bucks, it's really high end looking. It's a really nice size and I think it's a really good deal. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you like it better on the ottoman or do you like it better on the tabletop? And then this was my husband's idea. He's so smart, you guys. He was like, that would be really cool on the kitchen table with your little lazy Susan and we can put like spices and all that kind of stuff and then that way when when anybody needs it they could just spin it and take their spice so I thought that was a really cool idea and I wanted to show you um, his idea Moving on to DIY two and three. Now I kind of did these in tandem because we're gonna be taking almost the exact same steps for both of them. So I take out two of my 14 inch wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. And yes, let me put a quick disclaimer. My kids are home. I meant to say this. So if you guys hear them, that's why it just comes with the territory. I'm a stay at home mom and it just is what it is. So anyway, I take my wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. One of them I stain with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. And then the other one, I use that gel stain that we've been using from Hobby Lobby. And I have to say they are two totally different looks two totally different consistencies and I really enjoy them both so I can't really pick a favorite um, now this one like I said before is a little bit harder to work with but again it just comes with the territory um, not everything in crafting is super easy so it just is what it is but I really like the that they are both a different color brown um, so for the first one we're going to do the darker one and I do have two free printables linked in the description box below I will also do my best to link it in the pinned comment um, but I will have that for you guys so if you guys want to make these signs then you are more than welcome to do that but I take my first one it says welcome ish <laughs> it depends who you are and what you want and that is so true so um, I like I said I cut that out that way I can see where I need to tape it off I mark it and then I take my painters tape and mark and uh, tape off that section once that section was taped off I went in with my Dollar Tree chalkboard paint now if you guys are going to do this project, please just do as I say, not as I do. Do not use the chalkboard paint. If you use the graphite paper, you will not be able to see where you're tracing your little sign. So if you use chalk paint, then you are able to see it. So just skip the chalkboard paint and go straight for um, actual chalk paint. And then I go in with my graphite paper and I trace that out. Next, I go in with my white paint pen that I just got from Hobby Lobby. And I have to say, you guys, I have used a lot a lot of paint a lot of paint pens in my day and this is by far the best white paint pen that i have ever used i will definitely always pick up my white paint pens from hobby lobby because the other ones the pigment is just not very deep and it's kind of like see-through they're really hard to work with the paint never wants to come out i don't know what it is with white but I just never have good luck with white paint pens. So I definitely will be br buying this brand again. Now the black one is another story. We'll talk about that in a minute. So after I was done tracing my wording out, 
or I should say going over my wording with my white paint pen. Then I just grab some greenery, some random greenery I had in my stash and I cut the pick apart and then I use my wire to kind of tie them together in either direction. That way it's much easier for me to glue this down and then I glue it down with some hot glue. Once I was done gluing that down, now we're going to make a bow. And I'm gonna run through this quickly because I actually have a, an entire tutorial of how to make 11 different bows really, really easily. So I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner. But for this particular bow, all you do is cut seven different pieces of ribbon about, I don't know, 12 inches long maybe. I'm not exactly too sure on the exact measurements. I kind of just eyeball it. And then you're gonna wanna fold it almost halfway down, but not quite, and then pinch it in the middle, and you're gonna add that to your bunch. Once you have it nice and full the way that your eyes like it to be, <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to take a zip tie and tie that off at the bottom and then you're literally ready to put that on your sign. Now some people dovetail all of these ends. Um, had I made them a little longer I probably would have but I did not end up doing that since my ends were not that long. And then to attach this I don't recommend to staple it. My staples were a lot longer than I needed them to be. So I did end up just hot gluing it and then stapling it in maybe like a thicker part of the bow. But because these wood rounds are so thin, um, I definitely recommend to just hot glue your bow down. And then literally, you guys, that was it. I think this looks so high-end, so farmhousey, and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. But, of course, I can't ever pick between this round and the other one I'm about to show you. So as always, let me know what you guys think. I guess I forgot to mention that we're going to add a hanger. Duh, Melissa. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself. So to hang this, I just cut another piece of ribbon. I folded it kind of towards each other. I don't know what kind of fold this is and then glued it to the back and that was it you guys. Look how gorgeous this turned out. It looks so cute on my front door and I can't wait to show you the next one. For the second wood round, we're pretty much going to do the exact same steps. I take that Hello free printable that I made for you guys. I cut it up and then I uh, marked where I needed my tape to go. I taped it off and then I painted that middle part with my Dixie Belle fluff paint, giving it a distressed coat, not worrying about getting every little piece covered because I personally, once again, like that distressed look. And my hubby is so cute, you guys. He came in my shed and was trying to tell me how to find the center. Even though I knew how to find it, I just let him show me because he enjoys like teaching me stuff. So I just thought that was really cute and wanted to leave that in. But like I said, um, I gave it a distress coat in the middle and pulling back that tape is always so satisfying. Now I knew that I wanted to have two uh, black stripes on the top and the bottom. So I just eyeballed this. Um, I didn't measure it or anything. I just kind of eyeballed the lines and placed down that tape on the top and bottom. And then I used my Dixie Belle Caviar Black Chalk Paint to cover those lines. I once again peel back that painter's tape to reveal those gorgeous crisp lines and I also wanted to mention that I do always make sure to get the sides as well to make sure that it all looks nice and cohesive. Next I go in once again with my graphite paper and my free printable and I trace that out and then I go in with my black paint marker that I got from Hobby Lobby and this is the one I was telling you about that I'm not really too impressed with. I like the Sharpie brand or the Arteza brand much better but I did end up sticking with this one and with a little bit of patience, I did um, get this to work better, but once again, I still would grab for a Sharpie or an Arteza black paint marker. 
I then go in with a very tiny paintbrush and my Dixie Belle fluff chalk paint and I just kind of put a few little highlights on the lettering. Now I kind of followed the printable that I printed out. Um, the only thing I did not follow was on the O. It did not have any shadow parts so I did just kind of use my imagination and put them where I thought that they looked good. So I did just want to leave all of this here. That way if you guys want to copy exactly what I did then you will have it. Now to finish this one off I did the exact same thing with the greenery just using lamb's ear from Walmart this time. If you guys have been around y'all know that I love Walmart's floral. They're such a good deal um, and they're really high-end looking so I always shop there first for my floral. Um, but I did the exact same thing, glued that down. I also made another simple bow, glued that down to the middle of the greenery at the top as well. And then I just took some greenery from Dollar Tree and kind of filled in the empty spots. And last but not least, I took a rope hanger on the back and glued that down with some hot glue. Um, I added some cotton to the greenery as well and that was it you guys. I absolutely love the way that this sign turned out. So as always, let me know what you think. Okay friends, probably the moment most of you have been waiting for, this little interchangeable truck that I got from Hobby Lobby. I believe I got it for like three bucks, which I thought was a really good deal. So to start off, I take a grapevine wreath from Dollar Tree and some random greenery that I had. And honestly, you guys, I didn't have enough to go all the way around, which ended up being perfect because I actually love the way that this looks with the truck glued down to the part with no greenery. You'll see what I'm saying here in a minute, but I just placed my greenery um, going in one direction and then um, at the bottom going towards the other direction. Just a few um, picks, not all of them. So kind of like um, two thirds went one way and one third went the other way, if that makes sense. And then for the truck, I started off painting the hubcaps with my sterling silver that I got from Walmart. And then for the wheels, I just go in with my fluff Dixie Belle for the white part. And then for the black part, I used my caviar Dixie Belle chalk paint. Next, I gave my truck a really good coat of that same Dixie Belle fluff paint. Again, not being really strict about covering every little crevice. Um, now in the end, I do go in and highlight all of those little parts where the laser had kind of engraved it, if you will. Um, I did not want to paint over those, but it's kind of hard not to. <laughs> so I painted my truck and then I went in with my smaller black paint pen and I just kind of highlighted all of those pieces that are supposed to be um, standing out, I guess, if you will. I don't know, you guys. Y'all know I can't ever find my words. It's really hard to speak, I guess, these days. I don't know. Anyway, um, once I was done going over all of those little details, I and I didn't go really heavy-handed. Um, if you would like to, you can, but I ended up sanding it down anyway because I just wanted this to be very light, just like those little parts were. So that's why I decided to sand that down. And then once I was done that, then I went into the windshield. I painted that with my sterling silver. And then to finish this truck off, I dry brushed all the way around the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I said that backwards. Big deal. 
I dry brushed and then I realized that I would like my hood to be silver so I painted that let that dry and then dry brushed over that part so that it all looked cohesive to attach my truck all I did was lay it where I wanted it to be and then I used some hot glue to secure that in place flipping it over to again make sure that it stays in place by reinforcing it from the back with some hot glue once again refer to my bow making video that i linked in the cards in the beginning of the video if you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make a bow and then all i did was make a simple bow glued that to the part where the greenery was going in opposite directions and that was it. Look how gorgeous this truck looks by itself. I absolutely love it, but I'm about to show you what I did with all the other pieces. Now, again, I know I'm gonna keep saying this, but it's stuff that I repeat. So if you've been around for any length of time, then you guys know that there's just something about watercoloring that I just absolutely love. It's so peaceful and relaxing and it's really fun to do. So anytime that I can, I pull out my watercolors. So for the spring, I knew that I wanted my flowers to look really washed out. So that's why I decided to go in with my watercolors. Now there was no rhyme or reason. I'm no professional. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of playing around with colors. So once I get the color that I like for each part, like the blades of grass or the middle of the daffodils or the tulip, then I just take my brush and I go over those little parts trying to make shadows and make it look as realistic as possible but once again y'all i'm no expert i literally have no idea what i'm doing so just do it until your eyes are happy um you don't have to be a professional to do things you don't even have to know what you're doing as long as you try and do your best to do it right then that's all we can do right so anyway um i'm gonna let this play I just did green for the um, blades of, or you know, the stems, obviously. Um, I picked a few beautiful colors for the flowers. I love how the butterfly turned out, and then those daffodils are just absolutely stunning, um, and I absolutely love the way that this spring piece turned out. So for the flags and stars, I went in with my Waverly Crimson Red paint and obviously I painted the stripes and then some of the stars and I just kind of used red, white, and blue. Obviously for the flag, I used the traditional colors exactly how it was supposed to be and then for the stars, I just eyeballed it. Um, there was no, again, rhyme or reason to the color placement, but I did know that I wanted to incorporate some glitter since, you know, Memorial Day, 4th of July, you think of fireworks and shiny things. So that's why I decided to do glitter on this one. And I also used my watercolors for that blue part. And then once that was dry, I went in with some Dixie Belle fluff to highlight the stars and um, I'm just gonna let this play because I'm just having fun doing this you guys this is again not something I normally would have done so I appreciate you guys wanting me to do this because I know that I had such a ball doing it Now for the glitter part, to get that to stick to my little sign, all I did was take a really small paintbrush and some Mod Podge from Dollar Tree and place that down on the spots that I wanted glitter.
Last but not least, I shook that glitter off and I love this piece. I don't know, this one might be my favorite. I love the way that gold looks against that watercolor blue and the red and the white. I just absolutely love the way this turned out. So let me know which piece is your favorite. For the fall piece, I took that same gel stain that we've been using. I believe it's called Oak by, I'm not sure the brand, um, but I went in with that same gel stain and I just stained those pumpkin stems. And then, y'all, I am no expert. I don't even know if the way that I shade and do my paintings is correct, but the thing about it is I try my best and that's literally all you can do. So I went in with my Waverly Pumpkin, my Waverly Cashew, and my Waverly Moss Paint. And I just kind of eyeballed. I don't know. There was no um, pattern that I was going for. I just kind of kept all the colors separate. Um, so I kind of kept the green away from each other as best as I could, etc. And then I... Once I was done with the main colors, then I went in with all the different colors and I just kind of gave it shadows and I just painted until, again, my eyes were happy. And literally, you guys, that was it for this piece. Um, I'm not sure if I love it, but I know I definitely like it. So let me know what you guys think. Would you have left the shadow off or would you have done the shadows yourself? And last but not least, let's do the winter piece. Now I took my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I loaded up my brush and then the way that I painted this was kind of going in the direction that the branches would go in. I don't really know exactly how to explain it, but you can see what I'm doing here. And I also wanted to mention that if you guys are still here and have watched the entire video, leave a Christmas tree emoji in the comments. That way I know that you guys are still here and just know I appreciate you guys so much. So once I was done with the moss, then I went in with a tiny paintbrush and my Cashew Waverly paint. And I just kind of, once again, went in the direction that the branches would go. And then to tone that color down, I went in with some more of that moss and just kind of, again, toned it down. Then I went in with my mini chip brush and my fluff uh, Dixie Bell, I almost said Waverly, my fluff Dixie Bell paint, and I started by dry brushing the edges, and then I realized that if I dipped my brush in the paint and kind of dabbed it on the edges, then it would look more realistic and look like snow, so that's what I went ahead and did. I absolutely love this technique. I think it turned out so amazing, so um, to finish this piece off, I wanted again where those laser pieces are supposed to show I wanted you to be able to see them so I went in with my small paint pen I went over them and then to or I should say my black paint pen and then to tone that black color down I just went over that lightly with my white Dixie Belle paint and that was it you guys that is it for this video I absolutely love every single piece and I'm so excited to get back to farmhouse decor so let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite as always I love to hear your opinions and that also helps me for future videos to bring you guys content that you like thank you guys so much for hanging out with me if nobody has told you today you're absolutely stunning you're worthy you're gorgeous and you can literally do anything you set your mind to if you need any ketone or chalk info text my number on the screen the word chalk or ketone until next time i love y'all so much bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the diy fam here to your right